All right, response video of that Jericho movie guy again. So, yeah, if you don't, you know, I know people just really don't like these videos, but too bad. Um, it's probably worth hashing it out because there is this communication problem thing. So, anyway, I was a little hostile in my last video, and so I'll try to tone that down a bit, <laughs> a lot. So, back to your re-paraphrase of the argument, and uh, so I'll play your video again. Hey, Gary, nice to see a response from you. I got three things basically to say in response to your video, and if I don't hit on anything that you wanted me to hit on, let me know, and uh, I'll shoot it in my next response. All right. Well, yeah. I guess I would say just having just played your video, I don't remember exactly what you said exactly, but um, I guess it was a few hours ago. But anyway, um, the real point is is that we're we're describing two different things. So for me, the focus has got to be on a value equation. So, yeah, and we know what's a value in the world. There's, there's only two things. It's either the harm you do to somebody or the good you do to somebody. But that's it. You either make somebody happy or you hurt them. And that's the value equation. And all we have to do is figure out how much this desire, satisfied desire is worth versus suffering is worth. Um, but on a subjective level, we all have equations. We all could say, I would not want to live that life. Okay, like the elephant man or something. Yeah, I don't want his life. I mean, if I'm sitting on a sofa somewhere in purgatory, I'm not getting off my ass to go live that life. Um, so it doesn't have enough value. So I guess that's, you know, this is a measure of efficiency. And, you know, each one of us by existing influences the world. And the net, there's a net change that we affect on the world. All right? I mean, we, we, we hurt some people and we help other people. And there's an equation there of what we do, what our accomplishment is, whether it's good or bad in the end. It's my opinion that that's a, a discernible equation. I mean, we can't get the exact figures because we have limited knowledge. But um, you can know the basics. And uh, you can know the, the gross, you know, the harsh part of it. Um, and that's morality. Morality is simply having an efficient effect on the world, making the world a better place rather than a lesser place because of your existence. First of all, you accuse my word needs of implying uh, of some kind of value that was neither explicitly stated nor demonstrated. And that might be, but I'm, I'm not making any claim to value here. Um, <clears throat> well, the problem is, is you're saying it is a a given fact, okay? You're the one stating it as a fact, and what wasn't a fact is the definition of this word need. Because there's a difference between something critical and something not. And there's a whole presumption behind the need, the presumption that life is more important than quality of life, or some other, you know, how long you live versus how well you live. There's all kinds of value equations based into that word. So that's the problem with the word. You can't just, it's like tying um, it's like making an absolute statement saying this is bango. Well, bango doesn't have a definition, so bango isn't going to do as much good. I think we all ought to have values. I think we all are, have values inescapably. But my argument here doesn't make use of value. It doesn't <coughs> make use of value. It just makes. I know, but then I don't see any point in it. From, like then we're arguing two different things. I don't know how you can have a morality that doesn't have something to do with value, which doesn't have something to do with an efficiency equation or a productivity equation or however you want to phrase that. Um, but there's just no... There's, if you're going to extract the word value from morality, then you are talking social contract, in my opinion. Use of, of these axioms that I know you have issue with, so we'll try to to tease apart the difficulty. At the same time, you you did make, uh, I mean, I, I have to concede to you that I did miss some of what I was trying to hit with, with just the word desire, and so I will, or pardon, my word need, so I accept your word desire, but I would also offer this, that um, just desire doesn't hit all of the, the buttons either. I would suggest that both of these words are needed, and it's for this reason. Um, needs speaks to physiological needs. It speaks to... 
Well, again, you know, this is all real, get real convoluted, but we could say, yes, a human being needs a certain amount of water and food to sustain their life. It's vital to this, to their life being sustained. But none of us need the psychology we're possessed by. We can, we can quite, not that, without too much difficulty, reprogram that psychology. Okay, we can minimize what we desire. Um, if that's really what we want to do, if we know that to, our desires to be excessive, um, and again, it's it doesn't. You, we still have to justify the end. You know, you can't just say life is worth living, and then say that's okay. That's one of these axioms. No, you can't even say that. So that's why this equation has to go back a step because you can't just say and assume just because everybody agrees that it is. You still have to defend it with some sort of rational argument. My point is, we have no rational argument to justify perpetuating our existence. <laughs> you know, so it just doesn't exist because all that exists is our desire, and our desire is completely subjective. We have no objective cause to live. Uh, the needs that an organism always actively pursues because it doesn't know how to do anything other than that. Desire would have to do with a person's psychology, to use language I've heard you use before. Well, look, I mean, there, there could be a lion out in the jungle, right? And it could have a desire to rip the shit out of other animals, like, like hyenas. It's mad at hyenas. So it just starts killing hyenas all over the place. And it doesn't even care whether they're good hyenas or bad hyenas. It just knows hyena, hyena, you know, it doesn't make any value judgments. Well, it still doesn't change the value equation. Did he kill hyenas that would have been real enemies, or did he kill randomly? And, you know, so there's, there's an equation there, again, about whether there was more suffering caused than needed to be caused to defend any lion right. Desire um, is, is, is purely psychological. It can be in line with what the body physiologically needs, but it could also be counter to it. And, it's, and who cares? Like I said, who cares what the physiology needs, what the DNA is wanting? This doesn't really have anything to do with morality. The DNA doesn't have any morality. Its agenda is not has not been established as the important agenda, uh, not by any intellectual standard, not by any rational standard. So again, that assumption that's underlying your whole argument is just that, an assumption. You haven't demonstrated that to be an axiom yet that uh, human life must continue. You, you haven't even got that far. In that, that I, I reject your idea of, of um, addictions, because unless I have a, a misunderstanding of the word, addiction is going to be something where a situation in which we are pursuing uh, something that we want at, a, at a, an expense of our well-being. And yeah, I don't think there's any need to put in an expensive well-being. The word addiction just simply means that there's a, a compulsion, a drive, an attachment to something that isn't uh, necessarily based on any rational cause. It's a physiological uh, dependency. So in a, a sense, there's no distinction. I, I mean, you know, you could be addicted to nicotine, and if you've got your nicotine without tar and nicotine, I mean tar, you know, without inhaling it into your lungs, where well, you could probably live quite healthily uh, just as long as anybody else. It wouldn't change the fact that you were addicted to nicotine, even though it was a harmless addiction. It, you'd still call it an addiction. <laughs> so it's, I think it's a valid word, and I think what's valid is the fact that, like I said, we've made these artificial distinctions. We've, we've as cultures, in defense of their own silliness, they've established that one is a desire and one is an addiction. Um, but that distinction is completely subjective crap because one they've artificially validated and one they haven't. And so in that it would be say the pursuit of dire uh, desire rather that is at the cost of our physiological needs that's an addiction. But if we pursue a desire that's in line with our physiological needs and when I say physiological needs I mean the things the physiology needs to continue to survive yeah, well, there wouldn't be any such thing then. There'd be nothing that can qualify by that standard, because theoretically you could you could inject uh, enhancements to your blood. It wouldn't change the fact that you still get hungry. 
So, I mean, there isn't this any direct connection first between these things we desire and necessarily the most efficient way to feed our bodies. We desire food. But like I said, we can feed ourselves all kinds of different foods. Then I don't see that as an addiction. Um, but perhaps I should. Perhaps I should accept your, your word there. I will. I'm fine with the word desire. I would, however, like I said, give you both of those for physiological needs, psychological desire. Next thing. Uh, you talked about social contract theory, saying that um, what I'm arguing is just social contract theory. Right? I would disagree on this point. Social contract theory has to do with two people coming together with a mutual agreement that they just. Well, I mean, says you. I mean, where'd you get where'd you get that definition from? That social contract has to do with two people? No, social contract has to do with constitutions, the writing of legislation. It, it has.